Hey, it's Joseph here. Today we are looking at my daily driver desktop PC. And because it is sort of all black, it's kind of hard to tell what it is, but this is a custom built PC that I made for architectural work as well as 3D modeling and rendering and some video editing as well as gaming. And this is what I have configured based on sort of the budget and the performance that I need. So this is where I have ended up. So I want to kind of introduce all the parts to you. The overall case is made from Fractal Design. It is a micro ATX case, and I always loved Fractal Design cases. Starting from the front of the PC, this is an Arctic AIO cooler, which cools the CPU, and you can see the pipe that is going on onto CPU there. On their side is an Intel 12th Gen 700K version, and I've got two sticks of RAM, which is summing up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, and it is specifically DDR4. I got tough version of Asus motherboard underneath it. And in terms of storage, I've got NVMe SSD, two terabyte, I believe, Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. And then in terms of the GPU, as you can see, it is a GeForce RTX 3070 Ti to be specific. And I've got power supply under here, which is 850 watt power supply, which is powering everything together. And I don't think it fits on the frame, so I'm just going to have to hold it up and tell you about it. Again, I'm going for a same fractal design case, which is a Define 7 Nano computer case, which is a mini ITX version of this case that you're already seeing over here. Therefore, I am downsizing onto mini ITX motherboard, which is from Asus ROG Strix B660i gaming Wi-Fi. I do need wireless connections, and it requires DDR5. Therefore, Sabrent has helped me with these two sticks. They are Rocket DDR5 memory modules and they are 16 gigabytes each. Therefore, it totals to 32 gigabytes, which are plenty for my own purpose. So I'll be swapping those parts into the new machine, but everything else should fit in there. Therefore, I'm gonna maintain those other parts. And because I'm migrating parts into the new case, I'm gonna have to disassemble this build. So you'll see the disassembly as well as the assembly of the new case. So wish me luck and let's cue the build montage.
So some days have passed and I have used this machine to put it to the test of all the daily things that I had described. In terms of the performance, I didn't notice anything quite different. And technically I did upgrade from DDR4 to DDR5. Therefore, in terms of the overall benchmark performance, there is a difference. However, in terms of daily tests, I didn't notice a quite a big jump. However, in terms of the overall size, it actually reduced, I mean, the physical size of the case. So let me just kind of show you. And it's kind of hard to fit everything in the frame, but you can kind of see that overall width is about the same. And in terms of overall depth, there is about yay difference. And actually, in terms of the height, you can clearly see that there is about that much difference between the smaller cases versus the old one that was bigger. And just to be clear, they're both from Fractal Design and I have always liked their Define series. And this is a Define C Mini, I believe. And this one is the new one that I have built into, which is Define 7 Nano and it is a mini ATX case, whereas this one used to be micro ATX case. That's why you see a bit of a difference. And whilst it looks quite similar on the outside, actually the overall case design have been quite improved on the new design. So let me just kind of go over a couple of things that I have noticed. And you can kind of see that the side vents on the front side have been improved to have better airflow. And also I did show, but this is the dust filter that is built in towards the underside of the case. And whilst that is out, let me go ahead and open the front panel. And the front panel now has the Fractal logo on the bottom corner that is quite subtle. And it does have sound dampening inside. And also the dust filters are built into the side vents that I just mentioned. So in order to clean them, you can actually pop them out. And basically they come off like this so that you can clean it. And ideally you wanna clean them periodically so that you can keep your computer clean. And in terms of the CPU coolers, I've got Liquid AIO cooler from Arctic Freezer 2, 280 millimeter version. And normally I have them configured in the pull configuration, meaning the fans on the other side of the radiator. So you would normally see the radiator first. However, it was just tad too tall for this case. Therefore, I have them configured in a push configuration. Therefore, it will suck the air in and then push it towards the back. I'll kind of show you as I open the side panel, but I just wanted to show you how I have configured it onto the front side. And I wasn't sure if this would actually work, but I was able to put the long screws through the fans and reaching the radiator on the back. Therefore, I have configured it this way and it works out just fine. Since I've got the dust filters on the front panel, I don't need to worry about as much dust that is compiling on to the radiator. So let's put the front panel back on. And kudos to Fractal Design for keeping the design minimal and also sending me this case to fit all of my parts in it and perform great. I think the front panel might be metal this time because it is kind of cold to touch and the LED on the front has been improved. Therefore, it is kind of recessed in and it is a white LED rather than blue that it used to be. By the way, there is an optional top panel that's been included that is not solid. Therefore, you can have some airflow through the top panel as well. You can install your AIO that way or more case fans. But in my case, I want to keep everything sort of solid. That is my preferred design. And in terms of the side panel, I chose the solid side panel over the tempered glass because I prefer not to look inside of the computer all the time. And I want it to be somewhat minimal and stealthy. I don't need to worry about possibly breaking the glass or cleaning them up frequently. So yeah, this is my preferred choice. And you can easily pop them open and maintain them. Basically pull that out like that. It is a thumb screw less design, which I really like. And I always favored their sound dampening material that's on the side panel. Therefore, it is very hard to hear anything that goes inside of the case. And I would 
prefer that over temper glass option. So this is what it looks like inside. Let me just kind of show you. So again, as I have told you about, there is a fan and then the radiator afterwards. And I've got only just enough, I would say three, four millimeter between the radiator and the graphics card. So there was a close moment there but it can definitely fit the Founder Edition graphics card of RTX 3070 Ti and 280 version of Arctic Freezer and have about four or five millimeters left. And there is a good amount of space between the GPU and then the power supply garage and I have routed the cable that way there. Yeah, the AIO tubes are a little bit long than I would like, but it fits just fine and it's not going to prevent from the side panel from closing so that's all good and then the vrm cooler you can kind of see on the cpu there and everything else fit just fine so there's no rgb that is going on other than the one that is included on the motherboard which i don't see at all so it is sort of the stealthy kind of non rgb build if you will actually that's my preference so there's not much of a space that's been wasted, but good amount of space that is kind of allocated so that there is an overall airflow of getting the fresh air from the front, therefore it travels back. And then there is an actually bracket that used to be included right here so that it actually drives all the air up so that it circulates into the main chamber of the PC case. However, I had to remove that one section and actually they have designed it so that I can easily remove one section of that bracket. And there is another one if you want to occupy that space. However, I have left that in place so that that is still driving some air upwards. I don't know if you can see that there, but there is a bracket that is still in place. Therefore, it's going to drive some air up, therefore cooling the GPU. I really like that design very considerate therefore there's going to be air flowing from the front towards the back through the gpu and then all funneling down to this noxia fan that i have installed is going to exhaust all the air i could have certainly used the included fractal fan on here there was one installed here as well as one on the front which was 140 millimeter and 120 millimeter that was included with purchase of the case However, I had Noxia fan already, so why not? So I have installed that there, and then it seems to be cooling the PC just fine. And then the power supply is within this garage, the underground here. The power supply has been oriented so that it sucks the air from the bottom of the case and exhaust towards the back. Therefore, it is going to just circulate air on its own. And let me show you the front I.O. Or the ports so there are usb type a ports four of them but two of them are 3.0 and then 2.0 at the bottom here and then the power button it is kind of clicky it doesn't depress as much as it used to however i don't see a problem with it and usb type c ports and then microphone jack and then headphone jack and then reset button it is nicely all laid out in here it is very convenient to be able to have this many ports on the front therefore i can connect my usb-c port devices just on there moving on to the back side you can see that there are some grill design going on here and power supply is installed with the thumb screw design therefore you can pull it up quite easily it just slides in and out and you can kind of see towards the bottom side the dust filter as well as uh, included feet yep that's pretty much it and let me move on to the back side or back side panel i don't know how to call this correctly where the cable managements are and on the back here, you can see that there is NVMe storage from Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. The primary drive is two terabyte and it is located on the front of the board. And I have tried to manage all the cables. I think they look okay. I kind of tucked in all the extra onto the garage and that's what people do anyway. So yeah, that's that. However, if you were to manage these cable a bit better, then you can install the drive cage for hard drive. And also you can mount additional solid state drives back here as well. So there's a spot for it. And I believe 
This is a one of its bracket. However, I am not populating that because I don't have additional SSDs to mount on here. Yeah, that's as far as the backside of the machine goes. Yeah, so for the past week, I have enjoyed working with this machine since it performs great. And I think I'm going to name this machine as Blue 7.0 since the last one was Blue 6.0. Yeah, it is smaller form factor, which I like, and it performs great, which I like. And also, I didn't have to pay a whole lot to get this level of performance. So if you guys have any questions regarding of its part selection, please leave them down in the comments. I'll be happy to provide my thoughts. And as much as I have enjoyed building this build, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video as well. If you did, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.